Hey, what's going on? Matthew Timing here with another Joomla tutorial. I want to go over SP Page Builder version 5. I did a video not too long ago that went over an overview to give you an idea of what it's like and how to use it. In this video, I want to cover what this does so you understand. If you can grasp what this does, you can be able to build just about anything with it. So you want to go over to joomshaper.com and you can purchase the pro version. Now they have a free version and they have a pro version. I always recommend the pro version because it gives you all the bells and the whistles that you need, but you can still build a solid site with the free version, you know, but you're limited. So now let's head over to the actual demo. So when you come on here, and again, this is going to be a, a detailed explanation so you understand where things are, how to use it, how to customize your website, how to move things around and all that good stuff. So when you come on here, you're going to notice this is the interface, right? This is the front end. When I started creating websites with Joomla, they didn't have front end editing back then. You know, it was just everything was in the back end. Now, this has a back end component as well, but I'm not going to cover the back end component, just the front end component, because that's where people spend most of their time to build. So when you look on here, you notice that you have the different devices. When you are building a website, you want to make sure that it's responsive. What that means is if someone is looking at your website from a landscape that the site shows right. If they're looking at it from a tablet, that everything adjusts according to their screen. We're living in a mobile age right now. So if your website is not responsive, you're losing a lot of traffic. And the average person spend about 10 seconds or so on your site. If the site doesn't load or it's too slow, it doesn't show right, they're going to leave and may never come back. So being responsive is very vital and search engines like Google, they will penalize you if your site is not responsive. I've seen website even in today's world that is not responsive. It looks hard when you look at it from different devices. So this is where all those things are doing. So as you're building your website, from time to time, you want to check to see how it looks. You know, you may need to make some adjustments based on the device. Uh, so if you design something, you notice that if it looks one way in the tablet or the laptop or the desktop view, you know, and then you go to, let's say a tablet, a phone view, and you notice that it's not looking how you want, want it to look, you may need to make some adjustments with that. And we're going to cover, <clears throat> Uh, excuse me, we're going to cover what those adjustments look like. So with the adjustments based on the device, you can see. So you want to scroll down every time that you're designing. OK, I noticed that a lot of beginners, they don't do this. They just design and then they just launch it. If you want to do this on a professional level, you still have to double check, even though the device, I mean, the software does that for you. For example, you look at this right here. On the mobile view, this is not looking correctly. So you would have to do some type of adjustment with this, right? So you probably have to get this centered or you may have to change this some way somehow. But if you look at this same section here, if you look at it from a desktop view, you know, it looks good. So that's letting you know that you have to continue to check your work regardless of uh, what device you're using it on. Because if you don't do that, clients are using your website or you're designing for a client and then they go and they see that oh my goodness this entire section looks messed up and they've paid you any amount of money they are not going to be happy about that so make sure that you're always checking back landscape view once you once you design for a period of time you check back so this is key this is very very vital okay don't miss this part of it Check your work as you design. So now that we have the responsiveness part out of the way, now let's take a look at this other buttons, right? So you have the pre, you have the uh, undo and redo. There are times when you make you design and, and if you make a mistake, right, you you delete something. Let's say for this one, I'm gonna I'm gonna go over what this uh, options here are. So let's say I delete this by accident. Oops, I didn't mean to. Now, instead of you getting, you know, freaking out, oh my goodness, what's going to happen? I've lost all that work. You haven't lost it. Now, if you click save and then you X out of it, then you've lost that work. But if something like that happened where you didn't mean to make that change, you click this undo 
and right there is going to put back what you've you know what you deleted by accident that happens all the time so you get you better get used to it get used to the undo and the redo now once you're designing your site you can preview to see what it looks like this right now as you move your mouse over different sections here only you have the ability to see these right only you can see these highlights the blue highlights to let you know where you can edit the general public they don't see this when they're looking at the site so the way for you to preview what the public is going to see is you click on preview once you click on preview now you can look at the front end as if you were a visitor to the site now tell people that make sure that you do the preview as well so while you're designing it just do a preview scroll through the site if when you design a section you scroll through your design and once you're done you do a final scroll through to make sure that everything looks good okay so now let's take a look more at some other stuff so you have to save I tell people to get in the habit of saving more often because there are times this doesn't have an auto save function with it there are times when you're designing and I've had this happen to me not too often I had to learn from that you're designing your whole page you're designing you're designing and then you forget to click the save button all of a sudden your computer your laptop whatever you're using to edit just shuts down and you probably spend whatever time you lose all that work you can't get it back because this doesn't have the ability to do autosave which is a feature that they should consider adding autosave that after you design for maybe a few minutes or whatever they give you parameters for that after that then you can be able to click on save and it's going to save your work or it can autosave your work so next thing you have these three dots here so when you click on there you can click to close when you click to close it's going to close going to ask you do you want to make any you want to save the changes so i'm going to click leave page and then it's going to bring me back to the front end okay so before if you click close and you don't save your work that's what's going to happen you are going to lose all of that work and if you put in time in there you don't want that so let's go back to the edit now the edit shows up on every page so once you install page builder on your joomla website that edit and you log in is going to show up only after you log in so the general public is not going to see that just you so let's click on this three icons here again so you have export now the export feature is great because when you click export you can export content and import it somewhere else you know so if you have to transfer your content from one site to another site you click on the export and it's going to give you know you can export everything on here and then you transfer it over to another site you can do the same thing too with import so if you want to you've designed a site let's say for you don't on a stage server right so you don't it somewhere else and you want to let the client see what you're doing or you want to preview it somewhere else on a different server you can click export it's going to export the json files you can export those and then you can go wherever you want to you click import and it's going to allow you to import so when i click import it's going to ask me where i want to import you know um, get the files from so this is important so this helps you out a lot because there are times when i'm designing stuff for someone right or even for myself and i want to export it to a completely different server than what i have you know i take that export and import into another joomla site now that site has to be joomla it can be any other site so that saves you so much more time and you have a lot of you know stuff flexibility there now the clear content so if you're designing something or you want to start from scratch again when you click on clear it is going to clear everything on the page so if you don't want to click on clear, or if you don't want to clear everything, do not click on clear. So let's see what happens. I click on clear. It's going to ask me, are you sure you want to clear the content of this page? So I'm going to click on OK. When I do that, it clears everything off. So now I can start from scratch. Right. And I can click layout bundles, which we're going to cover in a minute. We can click add new row or we can click import layout now if you're starting from scratch if you're trying to build a website from scratch this is where you start you can use the layout bundles you can use add new row now the layout bundles it helps you because you can be able to choose pre-designed layouts already so if i were to click on home 
and I can click live demo to see what this look like. So let me click on the live demo. It's going to show me where they've already designed it. So before I import it, I can take a look at this specific page and see if this is how I wanted to, if this is what I'm going for. So let's go back here on um, the back end. So you can preview any one of these, right? So I click on portfolio and I wanted to do a live demo for the portfolio page, right? So it's showing me what it looks like and I can go through if I like how it looks, I can import it. And I would tell people to do this. If you're getting started and you're not sure what type of designs to go for, always check out the layouts because the layouts, they're going to give you a lot of different options for you to use. So you go back here so you can go through any one of these. If you see something like you double click on it. So let's take a look at this home for this one. I'm going to click on this home, right? And I'm going to click on a live demo. I'm going through all of the, these are very well done. Once you understand how to use page builder, you can design any one of these. You can work on them. You can tweak them however you want it to be. So I see the portfolio one. Let me X that off. So I'm going to come now and I'm going to go back to the layouts. So if you're starting from scratch, another option that you have is you can add a new row. If you want to just build from scratch, right? You want to do everything custom. Like you want to set things how you want. You click add new row. It's going to ask you, you have several options here where it says import layout blocks, saved items from here. It's just a click away. Now I didn't cover saved items. Okay. We're going to take a look at saved items later on. But what this is saying is when you're starting from scratch, you're not using a predefined or pre-made template. You can choose the layout that you're going for. I always go this route if I want to build something custom and just let my creativity just flow. I just want to do something. I always go this route by going this route. I can choose how I want it to be. And, you know, it gives me the layout that I'm looking for. So when I put my mouse here, I can also create custom columns. The goal of it is this. You have 12 spans. So any number that you add on here has to total to the number 12. So you see six plus six is equal 12. Four plus four plus four equals 12. And then three, three equals 12. So the goal of it is it gives you a variety of different layout options. Maybe you want one section to be larger and the other section smaller. Like you look at this four, eight. The four is the left side is smaller. And then the eight is the largest section. Now, once you click on any one of these, you can always drag them and adjust that accordingly. Let me show you. So if I wanted to go, well, before I do that, let me just put in here. Okay. You see three, nine. Well, I can decide I wanted to do nine plus three. It's going to do the opposite, you know, the reverse of this. And I click generate. It's going to generate the nine plus three for me. Let me do that like this. So now you have the nine plus three. So even when you have the nine plus three like this, what they've done is you can still adjust that. And it's showing, as I scroll over, it's showing you the percentage and how things are shifting. So I can go from a nine, three, I can go to a 10 to a two. Right. So now this is the smallest. It's a two that you can go to and then I can come on, adjust it. I can do this. So if I want the content to be more on the left or however you want it to be, I can, you know, drag slide over like that's a beautiful slider. OK, I can do that. And then so I'm going to come back here. I'm going to clear this again. So let's go back to where we were before. So you click the add new row. You can choose any one of these options here. Four, four. Now it gives you one, two, three. And in these, you can add anything that you want. We're going to take a look at add ons in a minute, but you can add any item that you want in one of these right here. Whether you can add a video, you can add a text, you can add, you know, um, columns, you can add nested columns, you can do all those things. Now, when you look over here, you activate another nav menu. So when you click on here, it takes you back to the beginning. Now this helps, for example, if you're ready to have a page, right? And you want to mix or you want to add something else. You can add another option. You can update what you currently have. If I wanted to update to, let's say a six, three. Now I've changed it to that. Let's come back. And I'm like, you know what? This does this, this layout. I don't want it. I want it to be this. So as I'm clicking on there, even though I'm clicking on like this, I can still drag this like that. And it's still going to expand. So I can come 
and I can I can adjust it even after I set the parameters that I'm looking for so you can go so this is really great because with columns it gives you so much flexibility in terms of what you're able to do how you're able to move things and all that so let's click on here now okay so I'm going to just reset this design here. Let me reset it again. So I'm going to reset it. So we'll get back to the original. So now we're back to the original. Okay, this is what it looks like. And I want to show you in real life um, example how that works. So you see right now, I can drag this over like that. If I wanted to content more on this side, I can do this. Right. You see some dragging it's moving. I can scroll through any section here and I can do the same thing. So this one right now is three, three, but I can go like this. I can make section bigger. I can make a section smaller. And when I put my mouse over here, this allows me to drag and move a console. I can click on there and I can drag it anywhere on the page. So that's what that does. You put your mouse over. You can drag it with this hair anywhere on the page. You activate that move, but I'm not going to move anything right now. I just wanted to show you guys. So you go back up. Every section has this section thing right here. So you can either change the layout. So right now, this top section is 5-7. So if I were to come in and click 6-6 six, six like that, now it's changed that to, to that. If I were to come in and say, I didn't like that, I want to do 3-3-3. Three, three, three. You notice that it's changing on that. So I'm going to go back to reset it. So the next option is this is the the row navigation with the row navigation. Every part of your website has a row navigation. And what that means is this. You have the admin label. I can call this section the hero. Now, this is only visible to the admins. This is not visible to the general public. So whatever name that you give here, no one else can see that. I use this as a naming convention because as you get to design more complex sites, this is just something that you can be able to use and you can have that way. And as you use and you have that way, you can always move things around. And from the name, you have the fill columns here. You can fill a particular column. So if you wanted to change the background of an entire column, you can change that background by fill right here. So it's going to fill the entire background. And then you have here. So every time, every section here, right, has a row and all the rows have the same layout. So you, the first section is the basic. The second has to deal with the background. This section has to deal with the spacing. This has to do with the alignment, the fluid. So as you scroll through here, it's showing you all the different things that you can style on just this section alone. This doesn't apply to the entire page. That's one of the good things about it is it does not apply. Whatever change that you make on here, it doesn't apply to the entire website. So if I change the background here, if I change the color, it's not going to affect anywhere else on this site except just for this. OK, so the background color right now, you see it's a uh, gradient. So if I were to come in and I click that now, the background color is just white. So if I click the background color again and I want it to be something else just like that, I can change the background color. Right. And then. I can put that. Now, this is one color. If I wanted to have the background color a gradient, I can do a gradient just by switching over to a gradient. I can put whatever color. So for the first color, uh, let me just go with something like this. And then for the second color, I can go with something different. That's like this. If I wanted to be, you know, be creative with it. So that's the beautiful thing. So for those of you that are creative, you can utilize something like this and create amazing backgrounds, right? Let it be your own. You know, there is really no limits with it is how you want it to be is how you want it to look now if you want to inc include a video you have several options here you can uh you could do a, a ogv you can choose to file you can let it loop you can choose to uh upload like an mp4 or you can click here to activate a youtube or a vimeo so you can if you have a video on youtube or vimeos you can utilize any one of these you put the link here um, it's going to automatically just pull up that video and you're going to be able to watch whatever it is. So that's how the background works. Okay. You go back to color, you go back to gradient based on what you've chosen It's going to work that way. And now you scroll down to the spacing. 
the spacing allows you uh, to space the top. So this 90, 0, 25, and 0. This the top. This the top. This the bottom. I mean the top. This the left. This the right. The bottom and this the left. Okay. So whatever changes that you make here is going to adjust it. So right now it's at 90. Let me X this off so you can see. You said it's at 90. Let me X that off. I click this X. So you see this 90 right here. I can click it's unlocked and I can click to lock it. So what does the lock and the unlock means? So let's go back here. So when I click on and by the way, I can drag this anywhere to on this page. I can drag that anywhere. So what does the lock and the unlock means? Let's go back down here. So when it's unlocked, it, it allows me to independently change each section here. So for the padding or the margin, I can change them independently. Let me show you what that looks like. So right now this is 90. I can put this one at a 30. All right, it's gonna, I can put this one at 125. It's gonna do whatever adjustments that's there. I'm just putting different numbers so you can see. Now, when you see something like this, that's locked, whatever number I put here, this is the number that's going to be the same across the board. So if I put in 10, because it's locked, it's going to be 10 in the top, right, bottom and left. I delete that again. If I put 50, it's going to be the same thing all around. So if you have it locked, the reason why you choose to have it locked or unlocked, if you're trying to make all your margins or all your spacing to be the same, you have it locked. So whatever number you put is going to universally adjust that. And then, of course, you have your alignment. And with the alignment, let me just go back here and just delete this. So with your alignment, it works the same way, right? You can, I mean, you can put uh, the right as I click, no, watch this right here, right? It's aligning it based on my selection. So if there's a specific part of the page that you want to move a content to the bottom, to the top, or to the right, you can do that. And you have another option to make the row fluid. So when you make it fluid, it stretches it out all the way to the end. That's what fluidity means. There's no stoppage. It expands it all the way out. Now, this works for certain images, but it doesn't always work for everything. So you have to know when to use this um, when you're designing. So if you click that there, then it gives you a little bit more parameters. You have the gaps. You can use the gaps. You can set the width um, for each gap. So as I move that there, you notice that it's changing, right? So that's, I'm gonna disable that and then disable that. And so now you see it's changing like that because I already set the gaps to that. So what I have to do is I just come back and I can put the, back to zero so now we put it to zero again you notice that all those different things show up so go to the fluidity right it does all that stuff so you can close that you can change the container width and then if you wanted to go back to the original you just click to um click to just reset it again i'm just doing all this to show you guys the flexibility that you have in terms of uh, customization with it so let's go back here and I'm just gonna drag this over and scroll that scroll down and then with the head and when you click on the head and you can choose the head and height and the head and weight so each item has a certain amount of weight that comes with it right you put that it's gonna be thicker it's gonna be heavier the minimum weight all this stuff is gonna show you what that weight looks like and then of course you have the border and then you have the top shape let me refresh reset this now with the top shape this allows you to build something unique i like the top shape and the bottom shape so let me move this over again so if i'm going to do the top shape let me scroll down okay so there's the shapes so if i see i put that cloud when you choose the top shape it enables that cloud now it gives me flexibility i could change the color of that cloud I can have it to be any color that I want it to be, right? And then I'm gonna go right here. I can move the color. I can change the opacity. You know, let's say I want it to be like that. I can put it to blue, put the clouds to blue, and then change it. I can make it all the way to zero, or I can, you know, intensify it to 100. That's pretty much up to you. So that's the clouds section. So I can click the drop down, and it gives you a variety of different types of shapes that you can use. 
Now, I love shapes because they allow you to build amazing things. You can let your creativity, you know, just run wild with something like this. So it has a top shape and it has a bottom shape. So we've done the top shape. Let me X this out. I'm going to scroll down. So you see we have this uh, wavy opacity at the top shape. Let's say I wanted to do something different with the bottom shape. So I'm going to enable the bottom shape. Now we have the clouds at the bottom. So I'm going to click the drop down again. Um, I can do this for the bottom. I can scroll down. I can do Rocky Mountain. So now I've designed and just like that, I have a bottom shape and I'm going to choose a different color, right? I can choose this and I'm going to intensify the path. I mean, just lighten it up and uh, pass it right there. So now we have the bottom top shape and the bottom shape. And we can see that it gives us, if I X this off right now, you notice that it's giving us a different look, right? It's giving it a completely different look, which is okay. Again, it's about your creativity. So let's scroll down. And if I wanted to, if I didn't like it, I can just simply just disable it. And just like that is gone. And then, of course, I can do the overflow, the hidden, uh, the initial. And then you have the miscellaneous with the radius to make things a little bit thicker when you're designing. And then you have the box. So those are the core things you have to wear. I don't want to get too deep into these, um, this section and then the idea with the class. If you do some CSS, you can give it even more custom look where you add CSS class that applies to just a specific section. Now, when you go over here to the title, this is where the title comes in and the subtitles. You can add different things here for the when you add a title. I can drag this over and then I'm going to put the color so I can make that color. So now there's the title you can see right there. I could also, I can, so as I'm adding, you see the title keeps going right there. So I can make that H4, I can make that H1, and the bigger it gets, I can choose the title font weight. So if I want it to be, let's say, 500, right, it's going to be stronger. 500 is a strong font weight. If I can do like a 900, I don't know what number this lets you go past, but I know 900 is very thick and very strong. So that shows right there. So I'm going to keep it back to the normal. And then I'm going to go to the margin. I can change the top margin, the bottom margin. Uh, I can. So this allows me just to manipulate the title. I can put it in the left. I can put it in the center. I can have it wherever I, I want it to go. So I'm clicking on there is going in different sections and different uh, directions here. So that allows you to do that. So now let's go over to the responsive. Now, there are times when you're designing and you want to hide a specific item on a specific device. So maybe you don't want certain things to show on a laptop or a tablet for whatever reason. You can decide what shows and what doesn't show. So I'm going to hide this on the laptop. When I do that, that entire section is no longer viewable on the laptop. But if I were to go on the mobile view, I am going to see that. OK, so let me show you. So now I've hidden this whole section on the, the laptop. It's not visible. But if I were to switch on to the mobile view, you're going to notice that it's right there again. Right. So if I were to disable that on the mobile view, now it's not long. It's no longer showing the mobile view. So I can do that and I'm going to enable it. This is good sometimes when you want to show certain content for whatever reason uh, to show on certain parts of the website and you want to hide it on another part of the website. That's great as well. And then you have the animation. The animation just allows for different um, movement like the flip, the rotate. So when someone comes on the page, right, this is what they're going to be like is going to show. And you have the duration, how many milliseconds, you know, that takes. You can adjust this. You can play with these for the delay, however you want it to be. Um, that's something you can mess with. So now let's go back. So that covers. So what I just showed you, regardless of what section of the page that you're on, when you click on this right here, you have this. You can also click on the save. When you click on save section. Now, when you save section. You do this when you design and use the same type of items often. So if there's something that I want to use on multiple pages, instead of me having to always redesigning the same thing over and over and over again, 
I can just come in and just save a section that I can reuse on something else. OK, so I'm going to call this as section five for whatever reason. So I'm going to click on save and you're going to see where that comes up later. So now I have just saved a section. So when I'm designing, instead of me having to rebuild this entire section, I can just pull it up when I need it later on at a different section, at a different design. I could always just do that. So now once I've done that save, then I can be able to click on duplicate. I can always duplicate a section. OK, I can duplicate a section right here and I can also click to copy a section and I can click to disable it. When I click disable, you notice that whole section is disabled. And I can also click if I don't want that, I can click to delete it. When I click to delete it, it's gone. I can click to undo and voila, it's right back there again. So regardless of where you are on here, if you can, if you understand how these work, it's the same throughout the entire website. So once you get this down pack, you understand how to utilize these whenever you're designing or customizing and makes things a lot easier. Now, when you put your mouse on each section and you notice you have three dots, right? You can customize each section each dot right here. So you click on this, you can duplicate, if I click duplicate, it's going to duplicate this entire section and I can click to hide. I can choose to show one section for the mobile phone and other section to show for the laptop. Or I can just choose to delete it all together. So I'm just going to click here um, just to let's see here. Just to delete it because we have that already. And you scroll through here and you notice that it's the exact same thing through out the page and with all of these right here right all these are the same thing all these are the same right here you click here and you can add forms as well so now let's go over to this little bar you see right here the add-ons when you have the add-ons you click on you can move this by the way you can click on here and you can reposition this anywhere that you want it to be you can put it on this side now the best way to do this right wherever you want is you click on add-ons and you see there's three icons here. You can choose if you click this one, it's gonna stick it to the left side. So everything is you know on that left side. And you can scroll down and it's sticky it on that side. If you want it to the right side, you click on to the right side. It's gonna you know show on the right side so you can be able to use it. So some people prefer it on the left side, other people prefer it on the right side, other people want to just keep it flexible. So if you want to do that, you click on here, it's going to go back to the left. And you have that flexibility um, all over again and you can also search so if you're trying to design something once you become familiar with all the content items you can be able to choose to search which ones that you're looking for so if i want to do let's say a box i'll just type in box it's going to give me all the add-ons that i can use that has the box okay um, if i put a module it's going to show me anything that has the word module but again, over time, as you become familiar with this, you're able to use, I use this because it, it makes things so much easier. As you become familiar with them, then you know exactly what you need. Instead of having to scroll through all there, you can just you can just search for it. And when you search for it, it's going to show you exactly um, how that works. So with these here, if you click on this, nothing is going to happen. Nothing happens. OK, when you click on here, nothing happens to it. The point of a drag and drop is you have to click on it, press hold down and then drag it over to somewhere on the site. OK, so you press this and then you drag it over somewhere. It's going to pop up somewhere there. And that's the point of the drag and drop. So the add ons, these are all the different types of things you can add on to your page. So you can add Google Maps. You can add an empty space. You can add a modal pop up. You can add raw HTML. You can add alerts. Anything that you see on here, you can add it on your website. And now that's where the benefit comes in because that gives you so much flexibility. You can add just about anything on your website wherever you want to add it on. And by by being able to do so, you give your website the look, the design, the fill. You can change the colors. You can change everything on here. Uh, wherever you want it to be and this has a slider you can put a carousel you can put a testimonial so once you're familiar with these then you can begin to add them however you want to I'm gonna cover these 
uh, individual a little bit later on. So once you've done that now, you can, if you click this X, it's going to go. If you want that to come back, you click it again and it comes back again. And one cool thing, too, is when you put your mouse over any section, whether it's this hair, you put your mouse over here, it's going to show you what the pixels are. So if you wanted to extend it, you can just drag it up or drag it down like that. You want to create more space up and down. So instead of you having to go in to click right here and then to go to the options and you see right now it's 187 here, it's 187. So instead of you having to come in here and readjust this to let's say 87, right, it changes to that. So with the 87, you can change that and then you can X that off. You scroll through and then now from the add-ons, okay, we're going to cover add-ons and how you can be able to use the add-ons to add to any page. If I drag that over like that, that's going to add a new row. So any one of these items here, as I mentioned before, you can drag it anywhere on your website. Once you hold it, you notice that highlighter is going to ask you where you want to put it and I can put it right there and I could always customize whatever I need from it. So next, let's move over to the layers. The layer shows you all the different sections of your site. This makes it easier for you to jump to a specific section easier. So if you click on the dots, right? Let me come back to the top like this. So with the layer section, if there is a section that you want to duplicate, let me close this here. If there's a section, which is this, if I click this eye and I disable it, now that's hidden. So let's say I like how this section looks, but I don't want to redesign it from scratch. Instead of redesigning it from scratch, I just want to replicate the same thing. Maybe I want to change, you know, a couple of tags. I want to change, you know, some wording. So what I can do is I click on this icon here. I can click save. When I click on save, it's going to ask me where do I want to save it. So I can choose to save this section and use that later, like repurpose it later on again, or I can just choose to um, not be able to use that. So let me come back here. So if I wanted to duplicate it, I can click to duplicate. When I click duplicate, it's gonna duplicate it again. So now it's, I have it twice, right? but I don't need it twice. So I'm going to click this here and I'm just going to delete that because I don't need it twice. So now it's just once. So if I wanted to, whatever I need to do, I click on this drop down. I can copy, I can edit sections, I can delete, I could even rename and I can check the settings, which is the settings we went over that before. So I can check the settings for each one and I can disable each one and I can, I can even move it up or down. So if I wanted to move this top section to the bottom, I can just come here and I put my mouse there and I can just drag it and now it's no longer at the very top it's at the bottom so you can move sections with just drag and drop anywhere and as you move your mouse over if you want to get to a section faster instead of scrolling all the way down I click on this section it's going to take me to the content for that and if I wanted to see what items are there I click this drop it lets me list a column in that column, I have a divider. So I can click on that divider and I can choose to edit. So if I want to go back to the top, I click, I'm going to click to the top. And then I click this drop down and I can choose and see what all is part of it. So the layers section, it shows you in a snapshot all the different items that are on your page. Now, this is helpful because as you design it, then you want to be able to check something somewhere to see what's going on and see what's happening. All of this always happened like you can just go through and see that. Now, this makes sense because when you start to design your site, this is a long page. It's not that long, but I've designed pages that are probably three or four times longer than this. This section helps you to locate things a lot faster. So instead of you having to scroll all the way up to find where things are, well, if you think you know the section where things are located, you click on there and it's going to take you right there and you can edit whatever you need to edit. So that's how the sections um, part works. Next, let's go over to the layouts. When you click on the layouts, the layouts gives you a ton of different templates that you can use as a starting point for your design. So let's say I want to build a corporate website, but I'm not sure what type of design I want to go with. I'm not sure the look, the layout. I can scroll through here and see out of these, which one do I want to use? Let me go to business, for example. It's gonna show the business. So I like, let me see how I wanna go with this conference. I click on this, right? 
and I can do one of two things I can click to import or I can choose to view the demo so let's click on the live demo I want to see how this look in real life so this uh, I like this how this, this looks and I wanted to go back and I want to implement that so I can just click on import when I click on import it's going to erase whatever content that I had previously on that page now it replaces it with the you know with the layout that I chose and I can just come and just tweak I can just edit I can click anywhere to edit the content just like that right I can choose to edit the content let's scroll down let's say I wanted to try a different design I didn't like how that one looks so I can scroll through here I'm doing marketing this is a marketing design I just want to come with something like this I can click on the landing page I want to go with this design and I'll just click on import and just like that is going to import that design and I can be able to change each thing individually it gives you a lot of flexibility to do that so that is how the, lay the layouts work right so let's go back to the layouts when you get to the layout section at the you can search for something too, you know e-commerce or whatever you want to search for if there's something that has that name um, then it's going to show so I type in corporate it shows me all the corporate templates um, if there's something I wanted to type, I'll type in conference. It shows me all the conference layouts. Now, if you look at the very top, you have the blocks. Blocks are beautiful because they allow you to build sites at record speed, right? You build fast sites super fast. So if there is a certain section that you want to build, Instead of you having to build it from scratch, you can look use what's called blocks. So you go to uh, animated text. And if I like how this looks, instead of having to build it from scratch, right? Build the columns and then build the rows, any type of nested columns or rows, I can do that. But if I want to save time and I like how a design look, if it's close to what I'm looking for, then I just have to click. I click insert. It's going to insert what I just chose so now instead of having to build this custom layout from scratch and to add it on I can just click a layout to insert it right so let's go back to layouts again and go over, over to blocks and then let's come now with the pricing so I want to I want to create a pricing but I don't want to build it from scratch well I like how this pricing looks I'm gonna click on insert right and then it should be somewhere at the bottom here so there you go this the pricing Instead of creating that from scratch, I just come in and I can just change the content of this price in here without having to build it from scratch. And as I covered before, I can do the style, I can do advanced, and I can do the interactions. We've covered that before. So let's go back to layouts again, and you can choose any type of blocks that you want. There's, you know, blend mode. You can choose a blend mode. You can choose call to action. All these are ready, professionally designed, and you can just plug them anywhere that you want on your website. You have the highlighted heading, you have the image carousel, you have the pricing. So you scroll through and see the ones that you want. Now let's go over to the saved items. You know, remember we created earlier on, we created a section called section five. So when you're going to be uh, repeatedly using the same section over and over again, it's always better for you to just save that because you can repurpose that section. So, for example, if I click insert, instead of me having to redesign it, this is the section that we use from the previous um, uh, layout. So I just use that again. I can use different sections, incorporate different sections into any design anywhere. That's the beautiful thing. So if I want to, let's say I, this section, right, I like how this look. I can click here. I can click on save. Right. And I'll just call this twist or whatever you want to call it. And I click on save. So now let's say I want to go to a different design. Uh, and I wanted to use, I'm going to click this agency right here. I'm going to choose this home page. Let's say I'm in a different design and I like how this look, but I want to add my own touch to it. So now I'm going to come here. I'll just go over to layouts and I'm going to go over to saved items and I'm going to go over to twist. And just click on insert so when I click insert it's going to insert that design this here at the bottom this is what we're saving and if I wanted to move it I can be able to move this up so if I want to move that I just go to layers and this is the last section at the bottom and I want to bring it all the way to the top and just like that 
it went from the bottom to the top instead of using sections now this is really great because other page builders you have to go on the page and scroll down and scroll up but this helps you with the sections move items easily up and down so that's how the sections uh, part works and you can also search for saved items as well so as you build your 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 own portfolio you can just you know search for any section that you're looking for so let me click x this out so next let's go over to media media has to deal with you uploading anything now i don't recommend you upload large files i recommend a cdn a content delivery network where it stores somewhere else whether you use amazon or you use any other source because the weight that is going to have on your website is going to make your website extremely extremely slow and your visitors are going to get frustrated so you go over now to images you can upload different files you go to video you can upload different video files you go to audios you go to attachments you go to folders you can be able to create as many folders as you need to for whatever you need now when you create folders it helps you to organize so if i already create a folder called 2023 or 2024 or 25 or 26 i click ok now it's disabled because it's a demo it won't let you create folders but you can be able to create any folders that you you know you want and just add items to it so i'm going to click right there and it shows all the content that's in that folder scroll through here and that's what's in there so i can do images i can do videos again i don't recommend video unless it's extremely short and it's you know um the size of it is not too large maybe you want like a 15 second clip that's like maybe 15 or 25 you know megabytes because you don't want that too much um but i wouldn't recommend that on there though. so you have the audio you can click here you can rename and you can also delete so as you go through each item here you can click on these three dots you can rename something you know for a naming convention or you could also click and you can click to delete something you have attachments you can install and add like a pdf or a word or anything else that you want for people to be able to download on uh on the site and now let's go over to the options with the options this is where the seo part comes in this is the title right this is only for this page this doesn't apply to the entire website okay so you put in that you can choose a category if you've created categories before you can add the categories you can choose the status publish unpublished or trash and then you can choose the language for those that have multilingual packs installed you can choose the language for this particular page not for the entire website there's another setting where you can choose the language for the entire website you can do that and the beautiful thing about joomla is that once you scroll down i can be able to choose the access level so if i didn't want for everyone to get access to this page let's say that i have a membership website and i want to offer this page exclusively just to my registered members or my premium members i can choose register now on the back end there's ways that you can be able to do some more but just to keep things simple when you choose register the general public will not be able to access this page they would have to be registered on the site before they can access the page okay so they can't just come in and just access the page and no it won't work that way so you scroll down and you can do special or, or super user that is the super user is the super admin or the special or you can live it at public or guest so live back to public and then you click on save now let's go over to the seo this is where you put your meta description your keywords and then you can choose for the robots now there is a global section on the back end of joomla this says robots use global there is a back end where you can choose your global settings if you are having a site where you want google or other search engines to index it in other words where people can be able to search for keywords and find it you will just keep this to global your global settings gives you the same options that you see here so for example if your global settings on the admin part of your Joomla website is no index, no follow, when you choose global on the front end, this is going to automatically just uh, inherit the no index, no follow. What that means is your site won't be indexed and your site is not going to be followed by the robots. 
the same thing here whatever you choose for your global on the back end that stays so if you keep this right now at the default for global so whatever the global is set on the joomla admin panel that is what is going to show up so i typically set my global on the admin panel so when i'm designing stuff i'm not worried about you know did i you know index follow or no you know no follow now if you have a section where it's premium content and you don't want search engines to get access to that right you just click no index no follow right here no index no follow or you can choose whatever directions that you want to give to the robots and then the open graph you see right here you can choose for article the title you can use for tv shows it gives you several options for a book it gives you options for a profile you can choose the open graph uh which is like seo and you can choose the image you can also upload put the description and then you can be able to save uh from there and then you scroll down you check your work again the goal of this was to give you a detailed overview of sp page builder 5 because once you understand the core of this when I go over any one of these and I'm saying, let's change the rows, let's change the height, let's change the opacity. Now that you have a solid understanding of how this works, we can be able to move forward with this other structures here. You know, you can use any one of these add ons now. And when I explain to you what that needs to be done, it's going to make a lot more sense instead of you not knowing um, what I'm talking about. Right. So now all of these, once you understand the concept of it, you can be able to design or edit just about anything with it.